I've been reading a chapter, and then look at the, at the chapter guide and the chapter. And what do you think? Guide. What? Uh, what do you think? What's the? It's great. That's the way to do that's it. That's the way to do it. Okay. Um, now here's the deal. You, you spent four hours, four years researching this thing. Yeah. It took on a life of its own. I've never seen a chapter guide like this for other books. No. Uh, I mean, this is like, this is what your life it looked like. So the question is, a, the chapter guide is incredible. That's not a question. That's just. <laughs> but, but rest assured, I will repeat that part. <laughs> um, but are you now, I mean, has art run its course for you, or are we going to see more in this general area? Um, he said the chapter guide is incredible. <laughs> it was a lot of work. I mean, I actually had proposed this book um, four years ago and started the research, and I had to stop and write, bite me because I had a house payment, and, uh, <laughs> and I had a book due, basically, on the contract. And, and so, you know, this started four years ago, but I wasn't, you know, nonstop. But, but I didn't have to write research by me because it's set in, you know, my neighborhood. And, um, um, and I had already done the, the hard research for that book with Abby Normal, the goth girl, for the You Suck. So anyway, um, I don't think art has run its course for me. I mean, I'm not tired of looking at it. I'm not tired of... I mean, my, I had one day off on this tour, and and, um, and Charlie joined me in Boston, and we went to, what's the name of that? The something Gardner Museum? Isabella anyway, oh, Stewart. Isabel. Uh, Isabel Gardner Museum and the, and the Boston Museum of Fine Art, where I've been a dozen times, but she hadn't, we went and looked at the sergeants one. So I don't know if I'm going to write about it more. I think I'm going to write about other stuff for a while, and maybe come back to it. I, I think this period is so rich that... Um, the hardest part about it was what not to write. When I had done, um, when I had done historicals before, there were these giant holes in history. I mean, the whole reason I did Lamb was I saw on PBS somebody saying, "There's 30 years of the gospel that don't cover Jesus's life," and I'm like, "Somebody ought to do that." <laughs> <laughs> and and when I did uh, when I did Fool, you know, which is based on King Lear, it turns out that Shakespeare was wildly wrong about, you know, King Lear lived in 400 BC. So there were no castles or earls or duke. It was like mud huts and a stick. Um, so I, I, but I researched, I, so I was able to make sort of this mythical 13th century that I could set the book in that was convenient for me. This book, they know everything each of these guys had for breakfast every day, and I left out three quarters of the artists of the time, you know, and just in that location, everybody was in Paris in the late 1800s, everybody. Mark Twain, Jules Verne, John Singer Sarge, I mean, you just name a luminary in any field. Uh, Wagner was there, and Renoir talks about meeting Wagner in his, in his biography. So um, um, it's, there's certainly a, a wealth of material that I could go back to. I don't, you know, I've, the underlying sort of supernatural conceit of this book, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it before, which I'm kind of, I'm kind of proud of that. It's, I know it's messing with those of you who haven't finished it, but, um, <laughs> but uh, like I said, read a review, they reveal all of it in the first <laughs> sentence. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I'll write, I, I, art's a part of my life now. I don't know if I will write more about it, I suspect I will, but I don't have any plans right now. Yeah, sure. Um, are you referring to someone, to somebody? Because it's, I don't know if I pronounce, if I can pronounce it right. Sacred blue, blue. Yeah. But then I've noticed that girls they are new, naked. Are you referring to someone? Sacred uh, no, no, blue. No, 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 no. Uh, the the sacred blue refer, referring to sacred blue in French oh. is my construction. Mm. Yeah. So, so that's, I mean, that, that's a, what do you call it, an invocation, and evidently something you have to put in every story about hockey. Um, <laughs> I, I, well, because I put a Google search up for it when I, when I wrote the book, so I didn't, you know, so some weasel wrote a bad review, I'm like, eh, you know, Winnipeg. Um, and, uh, and like everything, that I have like five hockey stories a day, you know, but um, the term is, the literal translation, although it doesn't work in French, is sacred blue. And the reason I gave it that is because the color of blue that I talk about all through the book, ultramarine blue, the church said that you had to paint Mary's cloak that color. Mm -hmm. 
and it became sacred blue because it was associated with the virgin's cloak. So it has nothing to do with nudes or anything. It has to do with the fact that it was associated in windows and paintings and icons by the church with with uh, the Virgin Mary's cloak. So, you know, that'll be on the test. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry, um, this isn't so much a question. Well, it kind of is, but it's a leading question. Um, what is one of my favorite books of all time. And I'm wondering why you think Biff is such an idiot. Because I don't. I think Biff was actually pretty smart and canny and stuff. So why do you always think he's mean to himself? I mean, you know, he got hit on the head all the time. You know, that's what it means. Um, I mean, what? I mean, <laughs> no, I think I think Biff, I think Biff has high and profane character. I um, the reason he gets the name for being hit in the head all the time is my editor when I sent that book in said, "You can't have a first century Hebrew kid named Biff. <laughs> um, you have to come up with a reason why he's na the reason I named him Biff is the first." Jewish kid I remember from grade school was named Biff Sloshman. So, so whenever I would think of a little Jewish kid, it was, the, oh yeah, that's Biff. That's, they're all called that. You know? so, but then when I sent the book in, my editor went, you can't have this kid called Biff. And I was like, what if I come up with a reason? Because now he's Biff. It's clearly his personality, you know, and um, and so I had I came up with that whole, it, in Aramaic, it means a slap upside the head. I, 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 I think Biff is a great character. I think he, he's ex astoundingly brave and loyal and lovable and, yeah. But you always talk about what an idiot he is. I am? No, in the book, like all the other characters are like, oh, he's such an idiot. He's so oh, dense, yeah. Well, well, that's basically, you know, Joshua was saying that about all the apostles. Okay. And if you read the Gospels, they're idiots. <laughs> I mean, he's like, I mean, there are whole sections where he gives them about 17, you know, parables in a row, and they're like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't even make that part up. I mean, they really are, they really are a bunch of nitwits. And, um, and that's why, and that's why Ma the Magdalene says, you know, you don't get it. It's not about intelligence. Faith is an act of imagination. Right. You know. And so, so, but but the fact is, I lived in the Gospels for I don't know two and a half, three years, you know, to write that book. And it's like it was like when I did King Lear. It's like I really hated King Lear, <laughs> really the the character King Lear. It's like you whiner. Um, and then when I was doing the thing about about you know Lamb, it was like the apostles are like you are really. I mean, I even had. Um, I, th I think Josh walks away after like a whole string of parables and goes, these are the dumbest sons of bitches I've ever met in my life. <laughs> that's simply because if you read the Gospels, that's what's going on. Is they just like, ah, mustard seed? <laughs> what? Um, so, no, I wasn't being mean to Biff. Because, yeah. I, yeah, I just felt like... It's okay. It's going to be all right. No, it'll be okay. It's all right. We all like Biff. <laughs> just, we like him just the way he is. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Did you have a favorite character to write in Soccer Blue? In this book? Yeah, yeah I loved writing um, I loved writing Toulouse Lautrec in this book. It was so great to yeah. you know, I knew that there's certain characters when I'm writing a book that I know when they come on the page, it's gonna be funny. Yeah. You know, and, and most of the time when he would show up it was like, okay, this is gonna be funny. Um, I like I really like writing the character Juliet. Uh, later in the book, because she gets, as you who haven't read it, she gets wilder and wilder as it goes on, and it, and um, and when she gets really hammered, I think she's hilarious. Um, <laughs> but but definitely, Henri Toulouse Lautrec was. Uh, I've always loved his art. Um, I was sort of relieved. Uh, a lot of us of my generation know, sort of I think formed our opinion of. Toulouse Lautrec from the 1954 John Huston movie, where he's Jose Ferrer walks around on his knees for two hours and being depressed. And when you read, you know, the accounts of Toulouse Lautrec and see the pictures of Toulouse Lautrec, that's not who he was. He was a bon vivant. He was a wild man, and he's I think much closer to what I portray in the book than he than in the Houston film. Um, and so that was kind of a relief for me. And, and he was great fun to write. Definitely my favorite. So you, 